The invasive species spotted lanternfly is a troublesome pest. It not only can destroy fruit trees, but they excrete a nasty substance that will stick to everything in your yard. And that sticky stuff also attracts bees and wasps. The Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation is trying to help by providing a $20,000 grant to the Fairfax County Park Foundation to replace the bug's preferred host tree in a park where that tree is, well, growing like a weed. To tell us about this effort is John Burke, Fairfax County Authority Natural Resources Branch Manager, and Patricia Greenberg, a Park Authority Ecologist with the Invasive Management Area Program. Thanks, you guys, for being in, coming in this morning, telling us more about spotted lanternfly. Why don't we start with you, Patricia? Why is the spotted lanternfly so bad? Well, thanks for having us. And yeah, it is a huge pest if it becomes high in population. Okay. So when you have many of these spotted lanternflies taking over an area, it will uh, destroy agricultural fields, specifically vineyards. And there, we've seen it already becoming a problem. Mm -hmm. And also, if you have it in your yard, it'll, um, suck, it has these sucking mouth parts that will um, pull the sap from the plant. Uh -huh. Your plants might wilt. Um, they also pass through them the sugars of the plant, uh -huh. so which is called a honeydew that they excrete, like you said. And so then yeah. that also attracts bees or wasps, that sort of thing. And then also um, that sticky substance produces what's called a black sooty mold. Oh my gosh. Which of course isn't very pleasant to have around. So this exc excretion, I've seen some videos, it's horrible, horrible looking. So if you've got a tree that's infested with these spotted lantern flies, I mean, and, and you're walking under, underneath it, I hear that it can feel like a soft rain. Is yes. that true? I've, I've seen the images as well, yes. Oh my gosh, and then it can get on, well, if you have a car parked under, but that kind of thing happens under trees that are infested. Is that or right? Or plants, that, yes, plants, plants that are plants. with it as well. Yes. So what's going on at Blake Lane Park? Well, at Blake Lane, uh, we have been working hard to plan for having a contractor go in there to remove the Tree of Heaven, which right. is their host tree species. And what, is, what, is that, what does that mean, the host, the preferred host? That's right, so, so many um, insects have a preferred species that uh -huh. they survive with or that they prefer based on right. whatever substance it might provide for their nutrition. So, so I think you said it was like candy to them. Yeah, like they right. just go to that tree. So if you have that tree and you know the bug is coming, uh, then you know it's going to be there, even if you haven't found it yet? That's right. So that uh, spotted lanternfly might be looking for that tree of heaven specifically right. since it's its preferred tree. Would preferred you mind telling us where this spotted lanternfly came from and when did we see it in the United States? Sure. Um, okay. So we first found it, uh, and Park Authority didn't find it, but it was first discovered <laughs> in Pennsylvania in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, it originally comes from Asia, and it's suspected that it came over on an import of some stones uh, mm -hmm. that were brought in. So yeah, 2014, and, and then last year is when we found it here in Fairfax County. And that was done by Urban Forestry Management Division, which is a group of public works uh, in Fairfax County uh, government. So I know at Blake Lane Park, we were out there last week uh, getting some pictures, uh, and the Tree of Heaven, uh, which that's just a nickname, what's it called? Right, it's Tree of Heaven is the common name common for name. Uh, um, Al Alanthus altissima. Okay, and that is all over the park, all over Blake Lane Park. It was, yeah. It was. We're working hard with a contractor <laughs> yeah. to remove it. And so what's the grant going to go for? Yeah, so, well, I'll let you answer yeah. that. Sure, you, yeah, so the the... The grant is primarily going to be utilized for replanting Blake Lane Park with uh, native trees, shrubs, and herbaceous plants that would mm -hmm. be typical of the natural communities here in Fairfax County. Okay. Um, and it, we're really hoping that uh, we're able to you know, restore the natural community of that park to something that would be more typical for what we see here, and also that we can alleviate any sort of local uh, concerns or issues associated with that high density of spotted lantern flies that we could see there if there was a lot of Tree of Heaven. So mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of work to date and there'll, there'll be some more work to remove the Tree of Heaven in that park. And then we're gonna follow up with this funding to do as much planting as we can uh, where it makes the most sense and with the proper plants to ensure that we've got a, a nice park for the patrons in that community. And as I understand it too, it's difficult to remove this tree because if you, what happens if you just were to chop it down? Sure, yeah, it, if you just chop down uh, Tree of Heaven, it, it will send out uh, suckers and re-sprout, and that can be a problem because you might think you've uh, solved the issue by removing the main tree, and then you may have uh, other Tree of Heaven sprouts popping up 15 or 20, 25 feet around where you initially cut down the tree. So we recommend that if you're trying to control Tree of Heaven in your own yard, 
um, that you uh, hire a certified pesticide applicator uh, certified by the Virginia Department of Agriculture um, and Consumer Services mm -hmm. and make sure that they are following the label for the herbicide, but you can follow up, or they can follow up rather, after cutting the tree right. down with applying herbicides. Smaller trees of heaven um, can be controlled by herbicides as well, but through different techniques. Mm. So for that reason, we strongly recommend working with a professional to manage it on your own property. Right. Well, out at the park, we could even see some uh, trees that you have cut down, and then mm -hmm. there's uh, some sort of green on them, and tell me what that is for. That's the, that's the marker for the herbicide that our uh, contractor used and applied to those stumps. Again, to make sure that they don't re-sprout and that we've, you know. Right, and removed. you know which ones have been treated. Indeed, Right, yes. and there's a lot of these trees out there. I was amazed because you could really identify them and they had these little seed pods. Uh, and so you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yes. Still yeah, do. A lot of work to do yeah. out there. Still do. Yes. And what, so what, if you get rid of all of them, are you gonna get rid of the spotted lanternfly? Well, we can't confirm that. Yeah. No. Well, our attempt is to try to limit their spread. Right, right. So this is so interesting. You've got some, a, a sample right here. Describe the different, because if people, we, we see the big, beautiful, beautiful, they're interesting looking, very unusual, unique bugs, right? These big brights and spots, um, but that's not what they always look like. Can you just describe the stages? Sure, so the early stages, they're called a nymph, and they start where they're black and white spotted. Mm -hmm. um, so that's their first stage, and then, the second nymph stage, um, they start to get red patches, also with black dots, uh, and then they morph into the, the adult stage where they have the, um, the gray, mm -hmm. uh, almost purple tinted gray with black dots along the outer wings, and then the interior wings are red, uh, a bright red, a very beautiful red, almost like your yeah. <laughs> jacket there, and then with a white stripe in there. So they really do, yeah. are very unique, and they do stand out. So what should people do if they see one? So anytime you're on park authority par property or really on public land in general, we really want to encourage folks to leave things as they are, right. not take things from the property uh, and not leave anything behind as well. Um, and that includes you know, picking plants or um, poaching uh, things like wildlife or things like that. Right. Um, spotted lanternfly is unique in the sense because it is very charismatic, bright, and easy to identify. However, uh, if you're on parkland, I would recommend talking to a naturalist, a site manager, or an ecologist before uh, squishing them, <laughs> which is what we would recommend you do on your personal property. If you see a spotted lantern fly, um, the recommendation is to go ahead and, and squish them. Uh, because, Get rid of them. Yeah, yeah they, they're introduced here, and um, that's the best management control practice we have currently for yeah. the homeowner. I like bugs. You're talking to someone who actually rescues spiders, takes them outside, but I will not rescue the spotted lantern fly if I see one. So you have my, my word on that. But yeah, I can see how once they're here, it's even more troublesome. Yeah. the species, right? And it's important also to report that you've seen them. So if you see one, squish it and then report it. How do you report it? You can report it through Ur the Fairfax County Urban Forestry Management Division website, uh, which we can provide. And um, if you don't want to do that, you can also notify the park manager okay. at, your, at, the, at the park site you're visiting, uh, a nearby naturalist, or uh, email parkmail uh, at fairfaxcounty.gov and we will uh, pass that on to urban forestry. Excellent. Well, John and Patricia, thank you both so much for coming in and telling us all about the spotted lantern fly and, and the work being done to try to uh, eradicate that, that bug, that nasty bug, and also the, uh, the preferred host in Fairfax County. You take care. Thanks for coming in.